presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Give us a call at 727-927-6648. You can send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. I can hook you out a little there. Some great news our boy Steel Dynamics up 5.76% today. New cores up as well. Some some phenomenal news. Remember, we're looking at that around the uh, the ninety dollar area, and that, I mean that really came back. I foresaw it going over a hundred and staying there for a little bit, but uh, you know can't really anticipate these kind of major buys off the top here. New cores up as well. Let's check it out here. Same kind of. Pretty stellar move for the steel sector today. Folks, uh, June 15th, that's in two days for all of you, Tim Ord uh, is having the, the final part of his uh, trading webinar series. This is going to be on gold, and, you know, no better segue to get into it uh, as gold is, is down today. So having Tim's insight, maybe looking at what he sees regarding bottoms, uh, regarding how we're going to, progress from this point on, you know, that's going to be invaluable. But take a look at gold. So we had CPI obviously come out today, right? And uh, there was a positive outlook on it. Uh, we had the GDX down 1.3%. Um, I had a buddy before I went on, he sent me a Nico Eagle. Uh, that is down 1.85% today. So the XAU is also down. Uh, some, some bearish looks at least on the XAU for that. Uh, if we take a look at CPI... I can pull it through somewhere here. This is on the BLS.gov's website here. So, you know, this isn't going to be the core, but if you look here on energy, you know, there is, this is really what affected the CPI today. We were down 0.11, uh, excuse me, down 11.7 on energy commodities, 20.4, uh, on gasoline, all types, 19.7, fuel oil, you know, 37. I mean, this is, this is pretty nuts. We did have an increase in food away from home and food at home. So looking at companies maybe like Chipotle and everything um, going forward as consumers are kind of staying away from maybe higher end uh, restaurants, um, they're still going to be eating out. That's now just be kind of become essentially like an American, part of American culture. Um, so that will stick around um, and, and looking for those companies that provide, you know, cheaper uh, food away from home. Eggs have gone down though, which is stellar. So, you know, we have a little bit of uh, depression regarding that. Um, the, the major fear I have, and of course also shelter uh, was up as well. That, it takes a while, I suppose, for the rates to kind of affect that. Uh, hopefully we will see an actual like genuine decrease in this going forward. Uh, the, the core CPI is still, you know, at a significant point, but the total CPI, um, you know, was down basically because of energy. I, I do get concerned um, if we run into something where, for whatever reason, some kind of unforeseen circumstance comes around and, and, and knocks energy up, you know, we could be back in kind of a uh, realm of trouble a little bit, at, at least on the sentiment of, of people in the economy. So that's what we're looking at. We are seeing a depression in gold because of that. And, I, you know, also always defer to Tom. Uh, regarding uh, gold, but that's what I'm seeing today. Uh, so kind of an interesting little development as well. I still think a lot of analysts and, and banks are looking at, you know, it, there is disinflation, I suppose, with this, but the deflation isn't particularly seen yet. Uh, so we still, I would say, are not really out of the woods, but uh, the market as it is now is, is loving it anyways. Of course, we're, we're rallying pretty heavily. So some news here. 
uh, want to take a look. This, this has a little bit of impact. The U.S. EPA is uh, going to release a biofuel blending mandate uh, rule by June 21st. Folks, that's my birthday. After delay, uh, court filing shows. Uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, uh, is expected to release a final rule on biofuel blending uh, volume mandates for the years 2023, 2025 by June 21st after seeking a one-week extension on a deadline for the rule, according to the court document on Tuesday. The EPA was set to issue a final rule by Wednesday under a court-ordered deadline, uh, but has agreed uh, to an extension with industry trade group Growth Energy, according to the filing. Uh, Reuters reported the delay early on Tuesday, citing an anonymous source. The final rule is set to mark a new chapter of the Renewable Fuel Standard Program. Uh, which is more than a decade old, while Congress set out specific goals for the program through 2022, uh, the law expands the EPA's authority for 2023 and beyond to change the way the RFS is administered. Uh, this summer proposal, the EPA would require oil refiners, and this is the important part, to add 20.82 billion gallons of biofuels to their fuel uh, by 2023, 21.87 billion gallons in 2024, and 22.68 billion gallons in 2025. 20, uh, it's been interesting. I've been watching a lot of, uh, I think it's on Business Insider um, and, and a few other sources, but just looking into some of the biofuels they have, uh, you know, they're using uh, a little bit of biofuel generated by algae. I think it's interesting and in kind of pushing this uh, through to a point uh, where we can actually see some kind of impact. However, and I, I think I might have touched on this a little bit yesterday, uh, but this report came out here. And it was fossil fuel company net zero plans are, quote, largely meaningless. Uh, the number of fossil fuel companies setting net zero emission targets have risen sharply over the past year, uh, but most fail to address key concerns, making them largely meaningless. Some 75 uh, of the world's largest 112 fossil fuel companies have now committed to reaching net zero. Uh, that's the point at which greenhouse gas emissions are negated by deep cuts in output elsewhere and methods to absorb atmospheric carbon dioxide. Uh, but that's up from just 51 a year ago. Most targets, and this is the key point, guys, most targets do not fully cover, or rather they lack transparency on what's called scope three emissions. And these include the use of company products, uh, the biggest source of emissions for fossil fuel companies. And they don't include short-term reduction plans, uh, the report added. That made them largely meaningless. Pretty intense, huh? The report also found that none of the fossil fuel companies were making the needed commitments to move away from fossil fuel extraction or production. As it stands, some 4,000 countries, state, region, cities, and companies globally have now committed to net zero. Uh, so that was last November, the UN issued um, on what a good net zero strategy was. And you know, this, so many times, I think they call it greenwashing, but companies use this in a lot of ways to get people to uh, basically buy their products and, and see them as a progressive company. That was something also with, um, how do you call it, like the fair trade. And I, you know, it's these kind of progressive terms they put onto products to make people feel better about buying them. And in reality, they're not hitting the point. I learned about fair trade is it's, it's not really a practice more than it is like an organization. And uh, while, you know, your coffee bean farmers and everything get more money, they, they certainly do not get a significant portion of the product, um, especially what's charged when you have a label like that. Folks, stay tuned. We have Basil Chapman uh, with us live next. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 welcome back folks take a look over here we have the opening call newsletter by basil chapman you know so every morning i i look at the newsletters just seeing what's going on i uh, I, I proofread some of them and uh basil's is always I love it, right? He's informative. He, he writes enough to get it across, but it's concise as well, okay? You can try this for 30 days. Uh, you don't like it for whatever reason. I can't imagine why, but you can get your money back. Uh, Mr. Basil, are you there? Hi, how are you? Doing all right. How are you doing? Jacob, it's good to hear you at this hour, and you're doing a great job. Thank you, Basil. It's good to have you on. Thank you. So what do we got looking at so today? You were talking about... You were talking about my newsletter, and what's really interesting is that in the in the Champ Wave, uh, the concept that I originally founded way way back when I was hand charting with pencil and ruler on engineer paper, was that if I identified the lowest low bar, if there were four peaks, that is each higher peak was alphabetized peak A, then the next peak which starts the leg starts a penny above the left side. Peak A, it starts leg B, then it makes a peak B, etc. Until it gets to do the fourth highest peak, that essentially over the years has developed so that I I take it from a buy signal, upgrade it to a buy mode, and it applies that it should go to at least a peak D. That's the core. At D, other things can happen. So what's interesting here, especially since I'm on with you at this particular time at what is a 3.20 mm. on the Tuesday, the day before Fed meeting, this is the 13th of June, we've got a leg C. And uh, for subscribers, we are long. We're actually long from this low right here in the uh, October loan. This is the weekly chart of the Dow. We're long the Dow diamonds that's the one to one long and we're along the three times long we've held it even though that's really just a trading position but it's it's we, we've managed the stops of hell it's been very good and we've added to it on the way up we've even shortened it but we've lately about a week ago we added to it and here we are in leg c 
So this is the difficulty. At sea with a Fed meeting, you say, is this it? Why, why? The, the irony of the whole thing is mm. that if all the technicals are good and this daily chart shows you that the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, is really strong. The stochastic is really strong at 94%. On balance volume, this blue line is uh, lagging a little bit. And I'm going to show you something in, in a moment or two. Time period moving averages over the 14. I mean, everything that you want is exactly here for a buy mode to continue. So we are waiting, regardless of what happens with the Fed, we're waiting for maybe a pullback and then a, a, perhaps a minor high towards the 34,000. Uh, today's high is 34,310, maybe, you know, above to get your leg D. And then we've got to be careful. Now, what's interesting is in the weekly chart, we've already got a leg D, even though it's technically under this last uh, April. Oh, was it? I'm sorry. Is that uh, April? That no, was the December, the week of the 16th of December. That peak as, uh, in the 34,700s, this is still in, in the waveform. It's in D. So there are a couple of things that are going on. So we've got the the Dowin leg C. Uh, you were mentioning just a moment ago, oh, what was the stock? Did I write it down? You were talking about it, and I thought, oh, that's a great example. Let me see if I can see it in my list of of stocks that we um, – We were looking at AEM, STLD, AMD. Uh, yes, STLD. That's right. Uh -huh. It's the steel dynamics, if yeah. I'm correct, right? Yes. Steel dynamics. So steel to STLD, where is it? Let's see it's here. We're only in a leg B in the daily chart. And the MACD is good. The stochastics actually at 82%. On balance volumes lagging, but the red little gray line is, is improving. The weekly chart doesn't look great. And the monthly chart uh -huh. has had a huge pullback from its, its peak E, but it's still acting very well. So here I am, and I'm saying, okay, well, I'm getting a little cautious because the tech sector, and I'll show you this here. We have uh, in the tech sector, we have. A stock I've spoken about very often when I've been interviewed by Tom for weeks now. I've been saying we have a stock called Symbiotic Inc. It's in the uh, AI, the artificial intelligence, robotic warehouse automation systems. And we're long from the uh, 21s. And wow. it's actually now more than doubled. It hit 47 yeah. today. But <laughs> I want you to say so in the one area, now look at the on little blue line, the unbalanced volume. It's the exact opposite of something like a caterpillar. Or your your SDD, which is uh, Steel Dynamics. Yeah. Look, Caterpillar is in leg E, but the, the, the stochastic strong, but the on balance volume is lagging. So I in my show this morning, and I'll do that again tomorrow in my show at ten o'clock. I what I wanted to emphasize was that this is a rotational market, and that somehow or other that whole uh, artificial intelligence area. Could in fact we also have bots, which is B O T Z is the symbol. This this is uh, Global X Robotics and AI ETF. The the weekly is a little extended. It's in leg E. If you look at the technicals, look at that on balance volume. Everything else is fantastic, but the on balance volume says just be ready for some kind of a pullback. Just a pullback, uh -huh. not a smash, but a pullback. The daily says the same thing. So way, the way I'm looking at the market right now, and I should also mention we are long uh, this uh, from the 24s is at 20. Hey there, Basil. Looks like we might have lost Basil for the time being. We'll try to get him back. Earned rest and oh. those. There he is. <laughs> oh, you lost me. Am I back? Yeah, we're you're back, okay, Basil. Sorry. We can hear you. What I was saying is that I think that we've got a rotational correction that is possible coming up. And that means that some of the sectors that have done really well take a bit of a breather. And the sectors that are like in the cyclical, as I just showed you, Caterpillar, like you just mentioned, uh, STLD, which is Steel Dynamics, that area starts to see some strength. That's the way this market works so often that when one sector takes a breather, the sectors that were lagging start to play catch up. So I'm kind of intrigued. And as I say, we've got, we got to be a little careful. We are at sea. In the Chapman way, we expect a D, but this is where I start to get a little bit cautious. Just on the shorter term, the daily charts, the weekly charts actually are all, all and the broadening of the market rally has extended enough for me to say, I think that the market could cope with some negative news from the Fed. Sure. But at the same time, it's really important to be a little careful in the sectors that have really run to the upside in an extreme way. 
fascinating. Fascinating. And, and so tomorrow you're going to go over that a little bit more, right? I'm curious what you're looking at with the blue line. We got about 45 seconds left. But are you looking for that so, convergence where, where it converges no, with the other stochastics? Or how are you looking at that? No, the blue line is a completely independent thing. Uh, Joe Granville, years ago, we used ah. to add up the price. It's a running total of a bar that closes up. You add it you add the run, to the running total of the volume, and if it's down, you, you subtract it. It's a very simple technique. Once they pulled, made it a line, and you didn't have to do that calculation, it's fantastic. So I'll talk about that tomorrow. It's almost independent of everything else. This is the only thing I use as an overbought and oversold signal. The others can keep going a lot longer than your patience. Fascinating. <laughs> Basil, thank you so much. We'll definitely tune in tomorrow, 10 Eastern time. Basil, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jacob. Bye now. Have a great afternoon and evening. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. All right, so run over this quickly. We have Disney. Um, they have some issues regarding their um, movie release and some of the streaming. Uh, they're, they're delaying a lot of their movies. So all the new Star Wars, Deadpools, um, Avatar sequels, and this is getting in the Marvels as well. And this is getting pushed out to like 2031, uh, deep 2029, 2026. So uh, they're having some issues, and this is essentially uh, just caused by uh, production delays with the ongoing WGA strike, partly. Um, and they recently paused some filming on some of their other stuff. But regardless, this, this stock has obviously been tanked pretty hard this year. Um, 
we reached as far down as 8701. It did creep back up to 95, but you know, really, I think the beautiful spot for the stock is at you know the 100 level, and it might take us a while to actually get back up there. Hopefully, with uh, you know the return of their old CEO, we can see something positive. I, I have shares in Disney, um, still you know above my entry price, but you know who doesn't want it higher from that? Uh, so we'll see. Next level we're trying to get at is 95, but you know again we have this 92 area that it'll test and uh, see if it can. You know it had big volume. And then try to get back up and then just went even deeper, you know, um, it's quite a bit of a sell off for that stock in general. OK, so Oracle was great. People loved it. It took a little bit away from AMD. We had William yesterday asking about AMD. Still think it's it's a great stock to get. It was down a little bit today. Uh, looks like we had some profits taken out of uh, NVIDIA as well, even though we're up about four um, percent. It was trading higher, however. Still, if you look at it on a year to date, uh, AMD is looking solid. They're going to unveil their new chip. Okay, and this is to compete with NVIDIA. Uh, so this is the Ryzen chip. Uh, it's going to be added. Let's see here. Uh, Meta is using it um, as its cloud chip. Uh, th this is pretty big for it. And this is the Ryzen Pro 740. Obviously, the government as well is using their uh, MI300 chip in their supercomputer. So it looks good for it. I get a little nervous here, not with AMD or, you know, not with the chip sectors at all, but with this AI hype, right? So I saw this article, this was in the Financial Times, and it was a four-week-old AI startup. It raised $105 million, uh, and this was euros. It's in Europe, but it's kind of giving you an insight how the global market is looking at this. Uh, we've obviously dumped a ton of money. And you think about it, too, like uh, most of this upward pressure in the market is from this AI rally, you know, and other companies uh, basically <laughs> adopting AI or saying they are. And of course, the generative AI is massive, uh, but it begs the question, you know, is a lot of money being dumped into AI companies that, uh, you know, might be taken back a little bit. This was uh, Mistral AI. It's going to be a generative AI such as ChatGPT and uh, all that. They have some old Google, Microsoft people. Uh, but just to show, like, this company, again, is a month old, all right? It has no product whatsoever, has barely any developments, and it raised $105 million in Europe's largest ever seed round. Uh, Mistral AI's first round of financing values the Paris-based uh, company, essentially, at $240 million. So are we seeing just, like, a hyper, you know, inflation of these, of these stocks? Again, I don't think this is the same with chips. Chips aren't going anywhere. This, these are really the, the future of this digitalized world, uh, certainly as we become more and more digitalized. But uh, it, it's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, obviously this will generate a lot of income, but that's when things like that start happening, I, I start getting a little bit, you know, suspect, I suppose. But we'll see. Uh, GameStop, regarding some of our, some of our memes, uh, the, the CEO picked up 10 million in stock, which was just insane. Um, we're looking at a little bit. That's Ryan Cohen, uh, stock worth 10 million securities filing show Tuesday. Shares of the company jumped 7.7% early trading. Uh, they are down nearly 80% from their peak of 120.75. There are still so many people who are stuck in this stock, and it's just kind of absurd. I mean, here we are like at its highest peak right here, 120.75, and just a slow burn. This company, I don't like it. Um, it doesn't really do anything. Nobody buys games in, uh, physically anymore. It's all done on stores. Um, if you're going to want to go buy action figures or, or whatever, you get those on Amazon. Far better. It, it seems to me, it surprises me. We have like a local mall here and they're still in there. Uh, one of the things that they, I guess, pull people in on is kind of like test experiences, which I guess is positive, you know, especially when we're having AI, excuse me, um, a virtual reality come out. It'd be cool if they adopted something like the, the Apple goggles or anything else. But other than that, uh, what's keeping this company afloat a lot of the time is, is kind of the meme investors on Reddit. Um, Cohen promised investors a digital pivot with a focus on e-commerce. And again, right, like that's the smart thing to do. And I mean that in a general sense, right? But you're still competing Microsoft and uh, Sony sell all their games on their platforms from their stores, right? So there's no need right now for 
and this is my analysis of it, but there's no need right now um, for uh, you know a middleman to get me video games or get products like that when I can just purchase them either directly from the seller um, or on something like Amazon. So they ousted even Matt Furlong, which is a former Amazon executive, um, and he was handpicked to lead the largely brick and mortar operations and company's uh, expansion. And that's obviously concern for a lot of investors. So some uh, interesting development on that. People still love that stock, but I think it's just because they're sunk into it. Uh, I was speaking a little bit about copper yesterday. You know, less spots are being found uh, with copper. Um, they're spending a longer time getting it out, um, but it seems that the as more and more copper is being used and integrated into um, EVs and, and technology, uh, we have uh, companies like Citigroup, they're looking at it and seeing a, a big top out of uh, copper over the next few years. This is a uh, little graph that Citigroup came out with. And they're expecting it 15,000 by 2025. So it'll be interesting to see. I, I definitely think, you, you know, copper, uh, you know, is certainly getting, it's, it's harder to find these kind of um, deposits of it, right? And so I was speaking on this with a friend and I was saying, you know, there's basically being used in kind of this EV blow up and this tech blow up. And they ask, what about lithium? You know, and that's a good question too, because lithium is, is massive, but lithium I was doing some research on it. Third most abundant element on the uh, in the universe, honestly. We could see this kind of chart of lithium prices and kind of top it out here. I was even listening to Elon Musk about it, it and it's, it's just easy to get lithium now and more and more uh, different techniques in order to extract lithium are being developed uh, ways that uh, you weren't able to prior. On the copper topic as well, Musk was talking about it. Um, I think he's looking in actually to Mongolia to develop a, a, a copper mine. So that'll be interesting to see it um, develop that way. But it, keep an eye on these, these copper stocks. Obviously, we we're just taking a look at Southern Copper. If I could get this back up here. We had a nice move today as well. And I'll just look on uh, year to date for them, get a general idea of it. The high at 81.98, we're creeping back up to that 75 level. We had some decent volume moving up on it. So we'll see. I like, I, I'm honestly considering it. I need to do a little bit more research before I get into anything copper, but uh, it certainly has piqued uh, my interest as of recently. Folks, when we get back, uh, we'll talk a little bit about these API kind of wars that are going on essentially, and, and really what that means for uh, you know future AI integration. Folks, stay tuned, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. All right, welcome back, folks. So yesterday, I was speaking a little bit about how Reddit was having a blackout uh, due to the CEO's new API rule, right? And so what the API is, is application program interface, and it essentially allows two different applications to communicate with each other, okay? Um, what was going on with Reddit is there were some companies that were using Reddit data um, in order to kind of make knockoff Reddit apps, right? And this is for like better user experience or whatever. What Twitter had done a while ago was start charging an immense amount of money in order to access API data. And the goal behind that, right, was to basically squeeze out competition so you couldn't afford actually to, to use that data on the API. Uh, Reddit is doing this as well, uh, squeezing them out. And this is kind of how, you know, AIs are being run, right? Like they're taking data from other programs and are able to utilize that data to do whatever, right? Just this is what's so nice about the AI. It's kind of the sky's the limit with what you want to do. And uh, in the future, we can, uh, I could see, honestly, um, some companies really kind of strangling each other regarding this, right? Like you don't want this person's generative AI to access your information and uh, vice versa to where we get into quite a, you know, almost like a gridlock at least in, in development with it. You know, furthermore, this is kind of a new way that companies are monetizing um, their kind of traffic, right? And the data that they're collecting from us. This is brought up specifically in the case of Reddit, right? A lot of the people aren't liking it, so they're protesting. Reddit, got, <clears throat> excuse me, Reddit got dosed yesterday uh, because of it. Um, but, you know, in the past, this kind of raw data uh, had been given uh, to, to companies for them to process and essentially market. But now this is going to be used in order to really create uh, entirely new programs uh, via generative AI. And so, you know, I, I think one of the big questions that's coming out of this is, you know, personal data ownership over that and how if companies are going to you know, obviously we're on their platforms and we agree to this kind of stuff when we access their platforms. Uh, but there's that discussion around, you know, does the individual have any rights to their data, um, you know, constitutionally or legally? Um, will they be able to um, profit off of it? I mean, it got to a point, there's a, the, a big knockoff of the Reddit application, right? I forget the name of it, but everyone uses it. And with these new rules, they would have to spend $24 million a year accessing the API. And that's impossible, obviously, for a free application, right? So, you know, if, if that's the, what could happen, you know, in a world, imagine if that's a more consumable amount of money, right? As opposed to just trying to be used to, to strangle uh, competitors. Um, will people on those applications that data is being harvested from Will they get to see any of that money? Should they get to see any of that money? It's pretty interesting. On top of that, it's not just these companies taking your data, uh, but there is a new classified, excuse me, a declassified report that came out um, that the, the government is doing so as well. Uh, and they are purchasing large amounts of uh, commercial data, essentially. And we'll pop into this a little bit. And I'll link that in the den right now because I always forget to do these things. But it's interesting to look into it. And so 
According to this, um, newly declassified government report confirms for the first time that the U.S. intelligence and spy agencies purchased vast amounts of commercially available information on Americans, including data from connected vehicles, web browsing data, and smartphones. Now, by their own admission in this, which is good, um, and th this opens up discussion kind of around these concepts of privacy, uh, the U.S. government admits that the data it purchases, um, and this is, this is in this report, um, clearly provides intelligence value, uh, but it also raises significant issues related to privacy and civil liberties. And what they were saying in the report is that um, it cannot, you know, it can cause embarrassment for American individuals, uh, but can also, in some cases, pose safety concerns. So, you know, as technology becomes greater reaching and, and as pervasive as it is, and really the main goal of a lot of these, um, you know, products uh, really being data collection and then utilization of that data for a better product, um, I think this discussion is going to become far more um, prominent in society. Uh, the Office of Director of National Intelligence declassify the released, uh, excuse me, and released the January 2022 dated reports on Friday um, following a request by Senators uh, Ron Wyden to disclose how the intelligence community uses commercially available data. The declassified report is the U.S. government's first public disclosure revealing the risks associated with commercially available data of Americans uh, that can be readily purchased by anyone including adversaries and hostile nations. It's another interesting point. And we talk about that quite a bit, right? Uh, the United States does not have a privacy or data protection law governing the sharing or selling of Americans' private information. And this is a quote now, in a way that far fewer uh, Americans seem to understand and even fewer of them can avoid, uh, commercially available information includes information on nearly everyone that is of a type and level of sensitivity that historically could have been obtained uh, by other intelligence gathering capabilities such as warrants, wiretaps, surveillance, and um, other methods, essentially. According to the report, the ODNI does not know which federal intelligence agencies are buying Americans' personal data. So I definitely, you know, if this declassification gets the, uh, the amount of attention it really should, I think in the coming year we'll, we'll see a, a, a meaningful congressional hearing kind of on this, right? And uh, we'll actually get a little bit of, um, you know, some kind of regulation or at least better transparency of how this is going in. And, and really, again, as a culture, we, we need to enforce this idea, um, you know, uh, of all your information kind of being online and, and, and being intelligent with what you give uh, your information to. Right. So the way you behave online, all of your information that has been monetized for a while. But now we're seeing that. Um, state actors um, are purchasing it as well. You know, this is our government, so, you know, people have different opinions on that, but the concept of uh, foreign governments as well having that is something to, to keep in mind. So, another interesting article pulled up here is we have the U.S. homeowners see equity drop for the first time in a decade. Uh, somehow Ohio sees more gains, so that's good for Ohioans. They need a break every now and then. Um, for the first time in more than a decade, U.S. homeowners have lost equity in their home, although Ohio homeowners continued to gain ground. According to the Real Estate and Mortgage Services, CoreLogic, American homeowners with mortgages saw their home equity drop 0.7%, uh, or an average of $5,400 from the first quarter of 2022 to the first quarter of this year in 2023. Uh, the loss, which totals $108 billion nationwide, is the first loss since early 2012, and reflects the decline in home prices seen in much of the country, although not in uh, Cincinnati. Again, that's great. Shout out to the Ohio and Tigers. I'm glad you guys uh, are, are seeing some gains still. Uh, homeowners on the West Coast and throughout the West saw the biggest declines in home value. And also, you know, we've been speaking about the West. I want to pull something out as well. We were talking about Hilton just basically saying they're not going to pay that $758 million um, debt they owned. I'm trying to find it here. But uh, the largest shopping mall in San Francisco also decided to say, hey, we're not uh, paying anymore. Going to find this. Yeah, okay, the Westfield, that abandons the largest San Fran mall. So, you know, West Coast is already in kind of some dire straits in general. Um, so this is the average homeowner in California, excuse me, in Washington at least, lost $74,000 uh, in equity. In California, down 59600 Utah down 37,700 uh, is pretty uh, intense moves. We'll talk a little bit more about um, the Westfield abandonments <laughs> when we get back. Folks, stay tuned.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before we went on break, we were talking about how the Westfield um, basically abandons the largest San Fran mall and stops paying its $558 million loan. Uh, John said in the den... Um, he was saying, uh, that's the one with Nordstrom is the anchor. It's a huge mall, and that's true. And Nordstrom is not renewing uh, its lease in August. Um, that store occupied 312,000 square feet. Um, when Nordstrom closes, the mall will only be 55% leased, and that's below the 93% of other Westfield malls uh, across the U.S. Um, it, it's nuts. Basically, they blamed unsafe conditions and lack of enforcement against rampant uh, criminal activity out here. Um, pretty, pretty significant. You know, this is going to, we were always talking about the smaller banks holding a lot of these CREs, but this is where we start seeing it become a major problem, I think. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what the path forward is. As the mayor even said, their path of recovery remains clouded. Certainly it does. All right. Some interesting stuff just to close this out. Uh, artificial intelligence, what, can it, what can't it do? Uh, well, it's going to give us a new Beatles song if we need that. Uh, it, it's, it's taking, yeah, I actually have a close friend of mine. He's, he's my MMA coach, and he's just been clicking away on AI, and, and he's making, you know, all of us, he's taking our audio and making uh, AI voices of us, essentially. Um, and this is what they're doing with John Lennon. Uh, so... <laughs> I don't know. Paul McCartney went on uh, BBC Radio 4. Um, they used to, quote-unquote, extricate John Lennon's voice from an old demo, 
and they were using it to complete the song. So that, you know, that's just bizarre. I know in the, uh, I can't remember which Star Wars movie it was, but it was one of the smaller ones. Um, they uh, basically AI the Grand Moff back into it, even though he passed probably like in the 80s or something like that. Pretty uh, crazy world. And um, we're already going to, I'm already seeing it like on advertisements on YouTube using the voices of, of famous people in order to sell like clearly scam programs and products. Uh, so yeah, he, be wise out here. I don't know. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, Tom will be back, I believe, uh, Tuesday of next week. We're out Monday. Thank you so much, folks. Have a great rest of your day.